Now, a US spacecraft has launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida to try and perform a controlled landing on the moon. It's aiming to become the first American mission in half a century to complete what's known as a soft touchdown and the first ever by a private company. To tell us a bit more, Julia Seeger, our science editor, is with me. And Julia, just tell us, first of all, big picture. What do we need to know about this mission? Well, let's take a look at the rocket first. Mm. It's 62 feet, uh, meters tall. It has a very powerful boosters, of course. Uh, it uh, has a unique characteristic that it can carry up to 27 tons of, tons of payload uh, in low Earth orbit. Now, here you can see it uh, being uh, uh, rolled out to its launch patch pad on, on Friday. Now, it was created by and developed by the United Launch Alliance. It's a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. And let's be clear here, they created this new rocket uh, just to stay relevant in a, in a market that's now dominated by SpaceX. So this was really a question of uh, uh, economic survival, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so th the goal was really to reduce the expenses. And just to give you an idea, SpaceX actually conducted uh, 90 um, 90 launches in 2023 compared to three for ULA. So here there was a, a lot at stake. Now, another uh, objective was to no longer depend on the on their former Russian engine suppliers. So there was also a question of sovereignty. Now, the Vulcan Center, as you said, was launched this morning. Everything happened uh, smoothly. Uh, and uh, it carries on board a moon lander called Peregrine, which was developed by the American startup uh, Astrobotic. Peregrine was actually funded by NASA that's now looking to create partnerships with startups uh, to help reduce what we call lunar freight costs, so sending that material up in space. So everything ha happened well, as I said. Uh, if it goes, if it keeps on going well, after 50 minutes, it's actually detached from the rest of the rocket. And now it's going to keep on continuing its journey towards the moon. It could last for a couple of days. And uh, the, um, the, the landing is actually uh, expected to happen on February 23rd. Uh, now, it's going to land on what we call the visible side of, of the moon. Uh, they're going to have to wait for the right conditions to do so. It's going to land next to uh, what we call the mysterious domes that are made of lava on the Earth, or so you're on, the, on the moon, so you can see it here. Uh, and the goal, so, of this inaugural mission is, of course, to land first, but also to conduct NASA-sponsored scientific missions. So they're going to be looking uh, more closely at the composition, at the radiations on the moon. There's also going to be scientific experiments for private companies, like like DHL. There's some controversy, though, Julia, associated with this mission, not least a payload from the space burial company called Celestis. Tell us a bit about this. Exactly. As part of this, with this partnership, uh, the goal here is to deposit 265 capsules of human remains and DNA of former presidents, for instance, like uh, JFK, George Washington, or Dwight Eisenhower, but also uh, the creator of Star Trek. And, of course, that has created uh, a, a lot of anger uh, namely from the Navarro uh, Native American tribe, which has condemned this desecration of what they consider as being a sacred place. And beyond religious beliefs, actually, space junk is a huge issue, so mm. they're not wrong there. Uh, the tribe did not succeed in convincing the White House because this mission is very important. If it succeeds, it would be the first time that Americans set foot back on Earth since the end of the Apollo mission 50 years ago. And would it also be then the first private company to achieve such a feat? It would indeed. You have a lot of different company. And this is a feat. You have to understand we're in 2024, but it's very, very complicated to mm. land uh, something on, on, on the moon. Now, in recent years, Israelis, Japanese companies have tried. Japan is set to try to do a moon landing in two weeks. Uh, India has just achieved it a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge achievement there. Uh, but as of today, only the United States, the former Soviet Union, China and India have actually managed to do so. We're going to hear about this a lot in 2024, uh, namely because of NASA's Artemis mission. So there they're going to be sending, they're going to be trying to send astronauts. It's actually going to be a woman for the first time uh, uh, on, on the moon. Uh, but also to establish, and I think this is very important, to establish a lunar base that could then serve as a stopover to Mars, which is what we considered as being the most habitable planet after Earth. All right, lots to watch out for, it sounds like, then in 2024. Thanks very much. Julia Seeger. Thank you, Nadia.